very fancy restaurant here in the middle of Mexico City's richest neighborhood, Polanco. And we are at Porfirio restaurants high-end here of Mexican food in Mexico City. So join me for a good cocktail and food. And I'm here, came here spontaneously because the Museum of Anthropology was closed. This is the starter appetizer, which are some tostadas uh, made of corn. We have a black bean type of sauce. And then we have another sauce, which is an orange color. It has some almonds on top. I'm so excited. And here we have all the spicy sauces right over here. So I'm so excited. And here we also have a cocktail made with hibiscus, with Jamaica, they call it here. So join me. Let me show you around the restaurant. Is this Mexico City in Mexico? Yes, it is. Indeed it is here. And look how huge this restaurant is. So, since I, it's one of those type of restaurants that if you come alone, they'll give you the worst seat in the house, uh, which is understandable because. But, uh, so I'm here, like, kind of right next to the kitchen entrance. Uh, but I'm so excited to eat with all of you. So, stay tuned. And how long is the flight to Mexico? It was about six hours. Gracias. Alright, so let me show you. He asked me if I was live, so he would be the leader. <laughs> I told him I export food from around the world. Alright, so this is Polanco. Chilangos que sugirieron porfirios. Because of your suggestions, I came here. So look at this. Oh my god. This is huge. So this, the, the guy just automatically recommended. in the middle and look at this what is this i'm not sure what this is it's really good you can see all the uh, waiters coming and going yeah yeah i'm definitely like in the center of... i'm in the center of the, the restaurant <laughs> so it's a bit of an awkward position but oh well gotta gotta make that beautiful content for all of you They didn't even wait for me to finish my meal. Mm. Okay, there was a little bit of bad service. So yeah. Mm. This um, bean sauce. Oh my god. So good, it's so rich, really rich bean sauce over here. Black beans is heavily in use in Mexico. It's called frijoles, and it's very soft, very creamy that they make it here. You might know as refined beans in the US. Now let's try it with that orange sauce right over here. So the tostada itself, pretty much like a chip. It's a good way to dip. All these are, I think these are pumpkin seeds. So on top, I think they're not almonds. I think they're pumpkin seeds. They call it amendras. So is it like a hummus? The refined beans almost tastes like a hummus in terms of consistency, yeah. Almost like a hummus. Let's try this orange sauce. Mm. So the orange sauce is very light. Again, it's very like kind of fruity in taste. I'm not sure what these orange sauces are made of, if anyone knows. But um, usually, I had these yesterday at another amazing restaurant in the rooftop, and it also had the same type of flavor to it. But this one tastes even more kind of richer. 
than yesterday's orange sauce in terms of sauces but it's really really good you know you expect these to be spicy but they're actually very rich and somewhat a little bit fruity maybe it's a, the lime or the lemon they add or something like that mm. I'm gonna try it straight from the spoon let's try it out oh my god you can almost eat this like a like a pumpkin puree It says looking very good. Yes, indeed. Get that seat, that's obvious. So, our manager came massive. Everything is good. All right. So, here's the cocktail. This is made with Jamaica and it's really good and hit mezcal. So, you can taste the mezcal bigger here. This is a little bit stronger punch than other types of mezcal. But let's try this main thing because we're already, uh, it's already warm. So let's try as quick as possible. Uh, so this is hibiscus, mescal, and I think another type of juice. These guys are speaking through very thick masks, so I couldn't really understand them. But it's a mescal Jamaica cocktail, really good. Mescal has a kind of deep flavor, but it's not so smoky as kind of American mescal. So let's try this with the mole, I'm so excited for this. And I'm going to try one more dish because um, I don't want to be live here too long. <laughs> I'm going to try one more dish for all of you. And the other dish is kind of a crazy one, uh, which I dare not try in the U.S. But um, when in Mexico, try this upcoming dish. But you'll find out soon. Let's try this, this uh, lamb chop first. Ooh, it's hard to cut. All right. Interesting. Okay, so they cooked it like a uh, medium well, medium well, and I'm gonna go straight and dip it into this, into the mole, straight into the mole, because I've had lamb chop before. No need to taste it bare. Here, we're in Mexico. We gotta have a little mole. So, mole is. I don't know either, but it's tasty. Let's try it out. Wow, so the lamb chop itself is very kind of, um, very tender, very big. They got some huge cuts of lamb here. It's nicely kind of charred on the top. Uh, so let me show it to you. It's nicely charred on the top, but the mole, oh my God. The mole is interesting. So nicely charred on the top right over here. But God damn this mole. It's hard to describe. It's almost fruity in taste. Way different from what I expected. Kind of American moles or moles in New York. They tend to be kind of like a little bit spicy, a little bit kind of dark and, and kind of like like a deep taste. Is it watery? No. The mole, not like um, not like New York mole, which can get watery. Look how thick the consistency is. Consistency it is. Look at that. Look how, I'm gonna try this, just pure. Oh my God. So it is spicy, like a medium spice. A lot of things are happening here. This is a beautiful restaurant. So who is the name after? Well, I talked about him earlier. Porfirio Diaz. At least I'm assuming so, because Porfirio I don't think is such a common name. Um, wow, this mole is amazing. So it, it tastes like a pudding, it is a bit spicy. It's like a medium spice. I'm in love. I'm, I'm truly in love. 
All right, let's try this. Um... Oh, this is a ham. They gave me a pancetta. So they gave me a pancetta. Hello, Action Kid. Hello, Claire. Hello, Panagiotis. Hello, B. Griffin. Nice to see you here. Another virtual meal with Ariel. Yeah, I love doing these virtual meals. Um, they gave me a, a big slab of pancetta. Look how big it is. Riquísimo. ¿Cómo se hace mole? ¿Qué son los ingredientes de mole? Son varios chiles. Chiles, así de chile, pastillas. Chiles, un poco de chocolate, costilla, almendras, nueces. No, eso porque es. En medio es diferente el mole que está. Sí, el otro es un puré de camote. Camote, ok. Ok, gracias. Said that it's a mixture of chocolate, chiles, uh, almond, and um, and around it he said camote, which I don't know what camote is. Hey, uh, and Babu says my dinner with Ariel, the movie. Let's try these string beans. Mm. Been into a chili. Mm. Built to like a huge chili slice. This restaurant is like a party over here. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, camote. Thank you so much. Camote is sweet potato. Thank you so much. Camote, sweet potato. Okay. All right. Let's take another bite of this. Is too good, too good, too good. I'm gonna take a little bite of the refined beans. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of all genders, when you come to Mexico City, have yourself a mole. This is absolutely mind blowing. It's such a complex flavor, something I really haven't heard, uh, tasted before. It looks like Ariel's seated next to the kitchen entrance. I am. This is one of those type of restaurants. If you come to a restaurant that's like old school, that means it's kind of older style. It's not one of those hip high-end restaurants. And, um, and it's high-end. You come alone without reservations, they're going to usually give you the worst seat. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Unless they find out I'm a famous YouTuber and they'll be like, oh, no, sir. Uh, sorry, we gave you the wrong seat. We got to send you to the, to the terrace. <laughs> that might happen. That might happen. <laughs> All right, so they have three spicy sauces here, which um, Mole can have 100 ingredients. That's quite a lot. So they have three uh, spicy sauces here. I see no reason to use any of these because the mole is so rich on its own. Why cover it up? No need. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna order the other dish because I want to try the crazy crazy dish. So stay tuned. Let's uh, let's order it. I'm gonna finish this after I order this one. I gotta like maybe cleanse my palate with more of the lamb chops after, so stay tuned. It's, it's, it's gonna be insane for some of you. <laughs> Don't mind to hear the kitchen. Yeah, you can hear the kitchen in the background. I'll show you around a little bit more. Let me show you as I wait for the... Jenny says, oh, I missed the beginning. Feel free to ask me anything. I'll wait for the waiter to, to ask for a really crazy Mexican dish that um, I'm a little bit afraid of, to be, to be fully honest with all of you. 
love lamb. It looks so delicious. Lovely restaurant. It is a lovely restaurant. So thank you for the... I really do appreciate it. The Rod says, Tom Selleck called. He wants his shirt back. You might want his mustache back as well. Uh, a guacamole con champolinos, por favor. All right. If you understand Spanish, you probably know why I just ordered. If you don't, prepare to be shocked. Because I'm combining a favorite food with a food uh, I don't know too much about. But I would not try this so-called food at any restaurant or not on the street. I'd rather not take the risk at the street. But here, super high-end restaurant, I'm gonna take the risk. So if you know what it is, keep it to yourselves. We'll, we'll do the big reveal when it comes over. But in the meanwhile, feel free to ask me any questions. What is this, an episode of, uh, what is this, an episode of, of Eddie Bordeza's Babu? Indeed, Babu. Some extreme eating is gonna happen here. so thick. You gotta really cut into it. Get some jalapenos. I already have jalapenos with this uh, sauces, but the mole is so good I don't want to cover it up with uh, sauce. So how, how much are the prices here? This is a super high-end restaurant in the most expensive neighborhood in the entire Mexico City. So I'm not sure how much I'm gonna spend here. I think it might be between so I think this dish right here, the lamb one, is about 40, 400 pesos, which I think might be around $24. 400 something pesos. So it might be around uh, 24. I might be spending around 80, 90 dollars. Mm. Is it mole poblano? Yes, it is mole poblano made with chocolate, yeah. Mm. So this is not sangria. It looks like sangria because it's both red. There's no wine involved in here. This is mezcal with jamaica, which is hibiscus. Jamaica is one of the very common aguas frescas that you'll find here. Aguas frescas are basically like uh, cold brew teas, in essence. They're like basically like iced teas, iced herbal teas, uh, for the most part. So one of the aguas frescas is jamaica, the other one is tamarindo, and then the uh, third one is uh, horchata. And there's a few others. But those are the main three that you'll find almost everywhere here in, in Mexico City. Where does the hibiscus come from? You see the leaf? Right here. That's where hibiscus comes from. It's a leaf. Is, if the food is well worth it, it's worth the price. Yes, says uh, Maria. See? This is a kind of cool angle right here. You know, despite it being like a if I were on a seat like this during a date, it'll probably be the worst seat in the house. But if for a video, it's kind of cool. You, know, you see all the people, a lot of action going on during this live video behind the background. It's kind of cool. Wendy, how are you doing? The restaurant, uh, is it for the rich? I don't see too many tourists here. I see well-off Mexicans here. Yeah, that's, that's my impression. It seems to be a place where a lot of Chilangos who have quite a bit of money and they're dressed pretty well so yeah. flip the camera. So yeah you get a sense of uh, how people are dressed up. I'm definitely, I'm de I definitely stick out in this case. I'm dressed, I'm dressed pretty down for a restaurant like this. Uh, 
I don't see too many men here with floral shirts. If I were to if I were to go to one of the hip other hip restaurants here that are high end, I'd probably fit in a little bit better. Uh, yeah, they're really dressed up right in front of me. You and eating in front of the camera is a winning combination. It is. I'm I'm so excited for this dish. I'm not sure when it's coming. But I'm ready to be shocked. Looks like comfy seating. It is. It is very comfy seating. I'm gonna show it to you. It is very comfy seating. Is that mine? Yeah, it is. Okay, wow. Bastante grande. Yes, yeah. It's <laughs> Muchas gracias. Tortillas? Tortillas, sí, perfecto. Gracias. Okay, everyone. I told you to be pretty brave over here. So, this might shock a lot of people. So, just um, beware. If you just ate, maybe take a seat. This is going to be shocking for some people. You know that we just walked through Chapultepec, and I just mentioned that that is an ancient Nahuatl word for Grasshopper Hill? Well, that's what we're going to eat. Grasshoppers on guacamole. Yep. Literally going to eat a grasshopper with some guac. The guac looks delicious. I'm not sure about the grasshoppers, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm feeling a little bit queasy just looking at it. I still got the lamb to wash it down to cleanse my palate after this, but I'm literally going to eat some chapulines. So why am I eating grasshoppers? It sounds rather nasty. Ariel, have you gone mad? Are you trying to be Andrew Zimmerman? <laughs> no. First, I'm not bald like him. Uh, but second, I have not gotten mad. This is a fairly common dish eaten in Mexico. It's not that weird in Mexico. It's not like a, I don't think it's a tourist thing either. I think maybe people don't eat it every day, but I don't think that's just a, for tourists or something that is uh, super rare in Mexico. This is something that people just eat ever, ever so often. So let me show you the tacos. Ooh, these look good. Monica says she'll like it. Okay, Monica. Monica is a chilanga, Tuninan. So I'm gonna make this with some tortillas. Let's put tortillas on this. I'm gonna be a uh, very kind of light with my um... Ooh, they have a blue tortilla. You know what? I'm gonna have the blue tortilla first. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna have a blue tortilla. Tortillas are made out of corn. Basically the main crop of Mexico. The biggest crop in the world as well. The Mexicans, or at least the Aztec. Oh no, okay. All right. All right, you guys want to get a closer look? All right, wish me luck, everyone. Let me not get it onto my plate. Oh, I got one, one escaped. One escaped and landed on the lamb. I'm going to put more guac on here. I'm going to wash it down with guac. Oh no. Oh. Sorry everyone, I'm very nervous. I'm nervous uh, eating these chapolinas. That's the name of grasshoppers on the Napoa. AKA Mexican Spanish. Ooh. Okay, so I'm eating chapolinas, but these people are eating a much more reasonable meal. Yava for the Chapulines. Have I tried this before? No, I never tried grasshopper before. 
tried like a grasshopper ship once. It wasn't too bad. Okay, so for a little bit of context before I bite into this. There was no really big animals that could be domesticated in ancient Aztec world or before then. There was no major animals. The only really big domesticatable animal in the entire Americas was really the llama. Uh, they had to hunt for deer, but he, deer is hard to hunt. Uh, so to get protein, the Aztecs depended on chapulinas, grasshoppers. They also depended on things that are much nastier that I am not going to talk about, personally. But let's do it. All right. If you, in your mind, say, this is chips, these are chips, these are amazing chips, these are just tiny pieces of tortilla, in it, it's good. <laughs> or, it's, or, or you could say, oh, it's chichadon, it's chichadon. It's just normal chichadon, great pork rinds like they do in Puerto Rico. Nothing, nothing too disturbing. But, uh, no, this is quite, quite crazy. Let me show you what's happening here. Okay, so, cool the other happened there. So it tastes it tastes like little pork rinds if you were to describe the texture. With the guacamole, it's kind of a jarring texture because you have very creamy guacamole and you have very strong crunch with the grasshoppers. Let's take, let's take another bite. I I I, I wouldn't like I wouldn't For the sake of the video, I'll have another bite. The guacamole is good though. I'm like eating all the, I can taste the crunch of the head, of the eyes, of the little wings and the little legs everything in full detail. I can taste everything of this <laughs> poor little grasshoppers. I just ate an entire family of grasshoppers here. That's why the baby is crying. She misses grasshoppers. Oh, oh. And I had a little leg. Oh, I don't think, I don't think I need to show you that. A little leg got stuck in my tongue. A little grasshopper like pierced my tongue. They dry them before cooking, says uh, Mags. Oh, thank you. You can taste all the parts. I can taste everything. You know, with the chicken, I, I can't see the chicken's face. I can't see the chicken's personality. I don't know who the chicken is. I don't know who this lamb is. But with these chapulinas, with these grasshoppers, I can imagine and see an entire family of little tiny grasshoppers. La having a fun time in the middle of Chapultepec Park, minding their own business, and then boom, some man just grabs it and toasts them, put them on guacamole, and now I'm eating it. May you rest in peace, Chapulinas. I guess this is more of an acquired taste. What's the nutrient content of Chapulinas? I guess protein. It's one of the best proteins that is not a main domesticated meat. Whoa. The 
taco's good though. <laughs> I gotta admit, I gotta give credit to the restaurant. They made it as appetizing as possible. And I really do appreciate them for doing that. They made it really appetizing. Um, so I appreciate the restaurant for doing that. <laughs> it has extra texture. So I'm not gonna really have more of this. I just can't. It's a. Uh, it's. It's all the things I've had. And um, just looking at it, I can't stop staring. But I also really want to look away. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna move that away. Hey, uh, what other is the, the lights are on the menu? I think that's the only one. There's not, there's no. Mo, some moles or some chipotle sauces might be made with ants. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Some chipotle sauces are indeed made with ants. And some moles as well. So that beautiful mole that you tried when visiting Mexico might have been made with an ant or hundreds. And uh, you definitely need a shot of tequila now. <laughs> indeed, indeed I do. Indeed I do. I have very little lamb left. I'm so I'm so bummed. I'm gonna have the pancetta. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna cleanse my palate with having a, a taco with some mole and some refined beans. Your skin is beautiful. No, oh, thank you so much. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Bien buena comida. Yeah. Is it a food vlogger? Yes, I'm a food vlogger, yes. I make videos of food from all over the world. Alright, that was the manager. Very well dressed. Huge man as well. Uh, now you're ready for Balu. I have tried Balu. Uh, Ronald, I have tried Balu before and uh, I loved it. It was really good. Really good Balu. Yeah. Hey, Ava says uh, for $15. Thank you so much for a $15 super chat. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you for your bravery. My pleasure. I'm glad I can uh, provide some quality entertainment. Uh, this, this taco has no no chapulinas on it. I'm eating just a pure mole and refined bean taco for just to cleanse my palate. Mm. So ultimately, I will recommend this restaurant. This is one of the best lamb chops I've had. I'm blown away by the mole. Try the guacamole. They sell the guacamole without the grasshoppers. They also have guacamole topped with chicken or apastor, which is um, skewered pork. So you can get guacamole instead with that. Uh, and the guacamole does taste really great. And the tacos, the actual con tortillas, really great. Try the other sauces. All right, I'll try, the, I'll try a little bit of the other sauces. Let's, Let's try a little bit. Try this uh, green one. Oh, the green one on the tortilla. Mm. All right, let's try this out. Mm. So the green sauce is very. A light, it's light, not so spicy as well. And then they have two other levels of spiciness. Monica says, be careful. Yeah, they have two levels of spiciness. And they said that the last one is extremely spicy. I don't feel like having spicy. I just walked in the sun for two and a half hours. So I'm a little bit good with the spice. And forgive me, it looks like cockroaches than grasshoppers. They are definitely grasshoppers, uh, but yeah. Do I like spicy food? Not too much. It's not, I'm not the biggest fan. I would have it, I would try it, but I prefer to savor my food. Mm. 
All right, let me show you one more time. Let me Deanne, thank you so much for 100 stars. So mild, medium, extra spicy, burn your mouth off type spice. This sauce is one of the best I've tried. Love the refined beans. And I still have just a little bit of lamb left, but it's hard to cut through it. And of course the mezcal cocktail. And uh, got myself some sparkling water. All right, everyone. That was quite an experience. Uh, I, I'm t I was tempted to get dessert, but now I realize I'd rather just show you not the churros here. I'd rather show you the best churros in um, in in Mexico City, uh, which is a very famous place, a very historic place. So I'll probably be back at some point later this week with a great dessert broadcast. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. One more time, cheers. May you rest in peace, little grasshopper family. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I'll let everyone know exactly how much I paid. So you know, you get an idea how much things cost here. If it's done like very, like I'm eating super high end in the richest neighborhood in Mexico City. So you'll get a sense of how much it costs to eat very high end. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a good day, everyone. And thank you so much, uh, Mukbang Reviews. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have you thought of living here? Yeah, yeah. It seems like an amazing place to live. You know, uh, I'm not sure yet. I have only been for a few days, but yeah, it seems like an amazing place to live. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, grasshoppers. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.